Hi everyone, this is uh, lecture 23 on systems of ordinary differential equations. And let's uh, go ahead and talk about our outline. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today is uh, the title of our lecture, Systems of Ordinary Differential Equations. And then I'm going to talk about higher order, uh, uh, order uh, differential equations. And uh, we'll find that those are related to systems in an important way. Um, and then we're going to go through and do a couple examples uh, and talk about how to solve these uh, systems of ODEs, uh, specifically in Python. OK, so let's dive right in. So if you remember uh, last time, so in the last lecture, uh, we talked about uh, system, or we talked about differential equations that looked like this: dy dt is a function of y comma t, where we had some initial condition y at zero is equal to y is zero. And remember, we uh, reviewed and talked about. Uh, or excuse me, we talked a lot about uh, different classification of differential equations. And so this one is a first order uh, differential equation. Um, it, it, it can be linear uh, or nonlinear. Um, but sort of importantly, we can do nonlinear cases, which I said is hard to do uh, in your uh, class uh, that you're uh, taking. Uh, for for analytical methods, um, this is an ODE, um, which means that there aren't derivatives with respect to a different independent variable, right? So there's only uh, t here, all right. And then this has an initial condition, so that means it's an initial value problem, an IVP, okay? Because we only have one an uh, auxiliary condition at one point, so that's what we said. Okay, and so there are many cases um, where what you'd like to do is you'd like to have more than one uh, dependent variable. So many cases uh, where you care about or where one cares about more than one dependent variable. Dependent variable. Okay, and remember that you know if I have some uh, y of t is the thing I'm caring about. This is the dependent variable. Okay, and this is the independent. So in other words, what I mean is I might have equations for uh, say oh, that was kind of the ugliest d ever. So um, these would be cases where I have something that I have, say, a y of t, and maybe an x of t, and a z of t. Okay, so I have three different dependent variables, but they all depend on t, right? So these are still ODEs because I have t, but I have three of them here, so three different dependent variables. All right? So. <clears throat> Let's just look at a little example real quick that's common to chemical engineering. So here's an example. I might have a reactor, uh, and in that reactor I have a chemical reaction where I have A plus B going to C. Of course, A and B are just variable names for some chemical I might have in, in the system. And so I might have uh, for this uh, I might have rate equations that look like dA dt is equal to minus k times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. And then I have dB dt is equal to minus k times the concentration of A and concentration of B. And what's happening here is I have a binary chemical reaction. And so this is the depletion or the rate of the concentration of A that's decreasing. And there's some rate constant and it goes down like the concentration of the product of these. Okay, hopefully this looks familiar from uh, something like uh, beginning uh, chemistry, okay, that the product of these is what matters. And then I'm making C at the same time. So I have dC dt is gonna equal positive K times A times B. And in all these cases, I'm gonna to need to know what the initial concentration was. So say, a at time zero was equal to, say, two moles per liter. Um, B at time zero is equal to one mole per liter. And then C at time zero, there's no C around, and so it has zero moles per liter. 
Okay, so there's a physical example of a problem in which we have three different dependent variables, one independent variable, okay, uh, time, and we have three initial conditions. So if we go back and think about our classification, okay, um, it's still first order, so we can write that over here. So maybe I'll scroll down a little bit. So this is still first order. Check, okay, it's nonlinear. Why is it nonlinear? Well, I have products between A and B, which are the dependent variables, so it's nonlinear. Um, this is an ordinary differential equation because I only have t, right? So this isn't something where I have t and something else, it's just one, an ordinary differential equation. And it's initial value problem because I have initial conditions here. They're all at t equals zero, t equals zero, t equals zero, okay? So all at the same time point. So pretty similar to this case, right? First order, nonlinear, ODE, initial condition, similar, except for the fact that I have a system of these. All right. So uh, because of this it, this, it turns out that the system is not that much harder to solve than just the, the single equation. Um, it turns out we can use some vector notation and rewrite this and make it look very similar to the form that we had up here. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I take um, some new variables, I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to make A become Y0. I'm going to make B become Y1. I'm going to make C become Y2. All right. And so now I can rewrite this equation 1. Well, let me call that equation 0 because I'm going to have y0. I can write that as dy0 dt is equal to, and let me call that f0, f0 of t and y0, y1, y2, right? So that's just some new function, which I'm going to call minus k y0, y1, all right? And I have an initial condition, which is y0 at time equals 0 is equal to 2 moles per liter. All right, it's about as far as low as I can go. There, okay? So now I can write, that is equation zero, just rewritten. Now I can write equation one right here, which is this guy. And I said B was Y1, so I have dy1 dt is equal to, I'm gonna call this F1 of some function of Y0, Y1, Y2, and I better scroll down a little bit. Uh, it's hard to see, but I have minus KAB, which is the same thing as this guy right here. So this should be minus K, Y0, Y1, and this one will be at the condition Y1 at 0 is equal to 1 mole per liter. Okay, and now I can do the same thing for the last one. So this is equation 2, equation 2. And now I write dy2 dt is equal to f2 of t y0 y1 y2, which now it has a positive on it, just k, uh, and then ab, which is still y0 y1, all right? And, uh, and notice I don't have any y2s over here. Um, that's because there's no reverse reaction, so there's nothing going that way, all right? But now I can write over here, y2 at zero is equal to zero moles per liter. All right, so uh, now that is just renaming the variables y0, y1, y2, but I can rewrite that in a way that's in vector notation that looks very similar to what I had before. So I can call this dy vector dt is equal to f, f vector with t comma y vector where y vector at zero is equal to a y naught vector, okay? Now the y vector is just the components I just described. So it has a y zero, a y one, and a y two in it, right? So now I have, this is just a more compact way of rewriting that above there, right? So this is just more compact because it's painful to write this in general, right? So I've got y, I also have f, 
which is equal to f0, f1, and f2. Okay, and then I also defined this y0 here, which is y0 at 0, y1 at 0, and y2 at 0. Okay, which I said, I'm going to get my face out of the way, was just 2, 1, 0. 2, 1, 0 moles per liter. All right, so um, this is a convenient way to write that equation. All right, and it turns out that this more compact way, this is good even if I have something more general. So I can have up to n equations, right? So I can have, if I wanted in general, that same equation applies. Oh, that should be piece, applies. Where I have y is equal to y0, y1, all the way to yn minus 1. And f is equal to f0, f1, fn minus 1. And the same thing with the y0 vector, which is equal to y0 at 0, y1 at 0, all the way to yn minus 1 at 0. Okay? So this same equation applies for uh, a system of n ODEs. Okay? So uh, let us... Um, so we, we are going to put a pin in this for a second, okay? So I, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem. It turns out that you can solve this with a, an explicit Euler method that's very similar to what we have before. But we're not going to worry about that in our class. We're not going to solve this with explicit Euler. We're actually going to learn how to plug this into Python and use Python solvers. And so I'm going to put a pin in this for a second and I say, okay, we've been able to do, we've been able to turn something that is a system of equations like this, that look like we have a bunch of ODEs. We've been able to turn it into something that looks a lot like our single ODE solution up here, right? And it'll turn out that when we go to put that in Python, that's gonna help us out a lot, all right? But I'm gonna show you one more trick real quick before we get to our examples um, to show you that it's even more powerful than you think it is, okay? So this is higher order ODEs. Okay, so um, not only are there lots of examples where we have multiple uh, dependent variables, okay, but there are also, there are also a lot of examples, okay, um, uh, where we want to solve higher order ODEs, okay? The classic example of this we've already seen in the last lecture um, is uh, Newton's law, uh, Newton's law of motion. So if I have uh, some mass times acceleration, dx squared dt squared is equal to minus g, all right, and remember g is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and I know in this system, for instance, suppose that I have x is originally equal to 10 meters and x prime at zero is equal to zero meters per second. That would be the velocity. So what situation am I describing here? Uh, we could just think about this as um, uh, young man standing on the edge of a cliff, okay, holding a ball, and he's going to drop the ball, uh, you know, and this is 10 meters up from here to the ground, okay, and he initially drops the ball with, a, you know, an initial velocity of zero meters per second, okay, so take the ball, hold it out, drop it, all right, so we'd like to be able to solve this system, okay, um, but so far, we've only learned how to handle 
first order differential equation. So let's think about what this one is. Okay, this is a second order uh, linear ODE IVP. Okay, so did we cover all the things we wanted to? Right, first order nonlinear ODE IVP up here. This one is a second order, but this one's linear. Okay, and this isn't a system, right? Non system yet. Okay, and that's the hint. So, what we're going to do is it turns out you can rewrite the second order system as, a, or the second order ODE as a system of first order ODEs. And the way to do that, um, and maybe you've guessed at this, is you can take the velocity and define it as dx dt, right? So I just use this three uh, lines on equal sign to mean define, okay? I'm going to define the velocity as the derivative, okay? That makes a lot of sense. So now what I can say is if I have m d2x dt squared, I can rewrite that as m d dt of dx dt, which now dx dt is v, so I get m dv dt. So now I have a first order derivative there for the velocity. So I can rewrite this as a system now where I write uh, m dv dt is equal to minus g. That's the same thing of what I wrote up there. And now this right there, that is actually another differential equation because I can say dx dt is equal to v. And now I have a system of first order uh, linear, I, uh, let's see, ODE IVPs. Okay, so now what I didn't show here was yet was how to do the, the initial conditions. Okay, so this one I have right here. I have an x at zero is equal to 10 meters. And look, I have an initial condition for dx dt. I said that dx dt at zero is equal to zero meters per second. So this one is dx dt at zero equals zero meters per second. But I said dx dt was equal to v. So instead of writing that, I can say that as v at zero is equal to zero meters per second. And now I have two initial conditions and two equations for x and for v, All right? So in general, um, let me write that down here. In general, we can turn any, better say turn, we can turn any higher order ODE into a system of first order ODEs. Okay, and if we have a system of higher ODEs, it just yields, we'll do the process for each of them individually, and you can still end up with just a system of first order ODEs. Okay, so no matter what, okay, if you have uh, a bunch of dependent variables and a bunch of higher order derivatives, okay, so many dependent variables, okay, and high order derivatives, okay, they always end up as a system of first order ODEs, okay. So we should do a little practice uh, with this so that we get good at it, because this is the trickiest part of this whole thing, I think, and this is the part I think students script the most, is going from this to this. So let's practice that real quick. Let's do another example to practice. So let's practice another one. And when we practice the other one, okay, uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna outline what the steps are. Uh, to do. So um, maybe I'll put that before I say practice another one. Let's let's back up here. Let's say, so what are the steps? So what are the steps here? OK. 
Okay. So step one is we need to define a, uh, I'm going to call it an intermediate variable, intermediate variable. Okay. This is like our V. Uh, I don't need a vector under that V. That's our V from that. Okay. For each derivative. Okay. Uh, and, and really not just each derivative, for each order of derivative that's in our calculation. Okay. So that's step one. And step two is substitute our definition um, into the original equation. Original equation and initial conditions. All right, so now let's do our practice. Let's practice another one. Okay, so suppose I have, uh, suppose I have this. Suppose I have anything, d3y dt cubed is equal to some function that I don't know, ty, okay, and y, Double prime is equal to, at zero rather is equal to a. Uh, y prime at zero is equal to b, and y at zero is equal to c. All right. So suppose that is my system. Okay. So what do I do? I have to define an intermediate variable for each order of derivative. So list the derivatives. Okay. So the derivatives I have are d two y dt squared and I have dy dt, okay? So I don't need to define one for d3y dt cubed, all right? I only need to do the other two, all right? So I have these two, that's the list of them. So I need to define new variables for each of them. So I'm gonna say that a is equal to d2y dt squared. I'm just making up an A here, but A might stand for acceleration, okay, if this were another case of position. And then I can say V is equal to dy dt, okay? So that's step one. Step one is done, all right? Step two now is to substitute them in uh, to the original equation, all right? So I said that dy dt or d2y dt squared that one is a, all right? So I go back and look at my original equation and I separate out d dt of d2y dt squared is equal to f of t comma y. Well, why can I do that? I can do that because uh, this is just what a third derivative means, right? I can pull out one of the derivatives and call that a derivative of a second derivative as a third derivative. And that's my second derivative. So that means I can say d a dt is equal to f of t comma y. All right, I've done that. But now what do I have, All right? I have this equation right here. That's another equation. So notice this one says that d dt of dy dt is equal to a. Well, dy dt, that's V. So I can rewrite that as dV dt equals A. Now, my last one is right here. Look, that's a first order derivative already. So dy dt is equal to V, All right? And there I go. I've got a system now of three first order derivatives. So notice what's going on here. When I have second order, I get two ODEs. When I have third order, I get three ODEs. Okay, that pattern will hold. When I have nth order, I'm going to get n ODEs. All right, so now all I have left to do is to do the boundary or the initial conditions. I keep wanting to say boundary conditions for some reason. Okay, so I go back and look up here and I say, y double prime at zero is a. Well, what's y double prime? That's a, that's little a. So little a zero is equal to capital A. All right, and then I say dv dt is equal to a. Well, dv dt, that's the same 
uh, uh, or excuse me, v rather is dy dt. That's a y prime. So dy dt at zero is equal to b. That's the same as v at zero. So v at zero is equal to b. And then y at zero, that's the same condition down here. y at zero is equal to c. Okay, so that's the answer for that little practice. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let me do the following. I'm going to give you one more to practice. I'm not going to work it out for you. Okay, so this will be practice number two. All right, and I want you, I'm going to write it out right now, and then I want you to pause the video and try it. And then I'll write the answer, and you can see if you got it for yourself. Okay, I'm just checking my time. So here is the example. So suppose I have d2y dt squared plus 3dy dt plus ty is equal to cosine of t. And I know that y prime at 0 is equal to minus 2 and y at 0 is equal to 2. All right? So take that one, see if you can figure out, break that down into a system of ordinary, first order ordinary differential equations. All right, pause it and go. Okay, hopefully you did that. Um, now let me write up the answer for you. I'm not going to go through and do this all out, but what I am going to say is I, I uh, rewrote dy dt as equal to v again, and so the end answer that I get is dv dt is equal to minus 3v minus ty minus cosine t and then I get dy dt is equal to v and the initial conditions are v0 is equal to minus 2 and y0 is equal to 2. Okay, did you get it? Did you get the trick here? This is the tricky part where if I subtract that over, I can substitute v in right there, and I get dv dt in terms of v on the, on the right-hand side of that equation. So I don't need to try and do something funky to do that. Maybe you got stuck on that one, okay? That, this is one place I wanted to point that out, right, to see if you've got something that has both of them in there. You just substitute v right on in, okay? And you end up with an, in the equation on the right-hand side instead of having this mess with other equations. All right? So let's step back for two shakes and see what we did. So what we did, we said, last time we learned about differential equations, and we learned how to solve this one case, this first order linear and nonlinear, but ODE IVP. And we said, actually, that's really valuable today, we said that, because you can actually turn something that has uh, a system of those and make it look a lot like the case we just did, but in vector form. And even better is we can take higher order ODEs and write them as systems of first order ODEs, which we can then also write in this standard form. 